let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. Coast to Coast, This Week in America. Airplane Stories and Histories by Norman Curry chronicles 200 years of aviation. A comprehensive and excellent overview of aviation from the Wright brothers to the possibility of electric-powered aircraft. Norman highlights the exploits of pioneers, notable events and developments, first Atlantic flights, World War airplanes, jet engine development, and post-war designs, and concludes with the projects of the future. Norman was born in Yorkshire, England in 1926, graduated as an aeronautical engineer in 1948, was a stress engineer on the de Havilland Comet, went to Canada, helped design the Jetliner and Arrow, spent 30 years at Lockheed working in the C-130 Jet Star, C-5, and special projects. He's a chartered engineer and a fellow at the Royal Aeronautical Society and has lectured in the United States and abroad, also the author of Aircraft Landing Gear Design, Principles, and Practices. Norman Curry, author of Airplane Stories and Histories, is our guest on This Week in America. Pleasure to have you with us. Thank you for joining us. I'm looking forward to our conversation today. Let's go back to where it all began for you. The Aviation Career Bay began back in 1941. You joined the British Air Training Corps. What was your fascination back at the early days of aviation, your interest in aviation? Where did that interest come from? Uh, I'm not sure. Well, first, at that time, I was only about 14 or 15 years of age, and um uh, like m- most people at that age, uh, airplanes were fascinating, and uh, uh, so I joined the Air Training Corps, and the year after I joined, I made my first flight. Uh, the, the, the war was on at that time, and I, I, I made my first flight in a Vickers Wellington bomber, uh, laying in the, in the bomber in a seat in the front of the airplane, practicing... Uh, learning how to use the bomb aiming equipment, so wow. that that was how it, how it all started, and uh, and then at the age of seventeen and a half, I then went to college and learned how to be an aeronautical engineer. That's just an amazing story. What was that first like? That first flight like for you? I'm sure something you fantasized about what this was going to be. What was it like that first flight that you were on? Exciting! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, it, it was a, almost, I would say, almost a fulfillment of a dream. But I, I thoroughly enjoyed every every minute of it. And then it led to this career that I'd mentioned, and writing this book. The book is Airplane Stories and Histories by Norman Curry. You'll find the book, of course, at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, published by BooksidePress.com. Book there as well. And if you go to our website, you'll be able to link on to, uh, to uh, information and order the book there as well. Let's start with some of the people you talk about, the early pioneers of aviation. Some say the true inventor of the airplane is Sir George Cayley. Talk about that and who actually invented, who was the, the father of aviation? He was, uh, some, some people in the, in the Royal Aeronautical Society uh, dubbed him as the father of aviation. Um, he was, in fact, the first man to design and build an airplane which uh, was able to uh, to fly successfully uh, under, under some degree of control. He, he wasn't powered because the internal combustion engine had not been invented at that time. It had to wait until the Wright brothers came along in 1903 before we got a powered flight. But Sir George Cayley was a fine old man uh, and a fellow Yorkshireman, by the way, he was born in Scarborough, ah. and uh, uh, he also was uh, quite an inventor. He in, in, invented many things, like like the tank, the, the tank treads, the the the, 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 uh, on, uh, the we use on tanks today. Oh yes, uh, he was he was the one who invented tank treads, which were used in on tanks in World War One and the Battle of the Somme. Well, you'll find out more about uh, KLA and, and so many early pioneers in aviation in Norman's book, Airplane Stories and History. Then you mentioned the Wright brothers. This is when it really took off. 
Talk about uh, the Wright brothers, that famous flight at, uh, at Kitty Hawk. What exactly happened during that flight? Talk, talk about the significance of that. Well, first of all, the, the, the Wright brothers, the, the two, Orville and Wilbur, they, they had no university education. Um, but uh, they, also, they, they started a bicycle shop in Dayton, Ohio. And they were interested in aviation. So they wrote to the Wright brothers, to the, the Smithsonian, Smithsonian Institute, to get inf- all the information they could. They then designed and built their own airplane. They even designed their own internal combustion engine, a 12 horsepower engine. Wow. The, the, to, to the, 12, the 12 horsepower engine drove two propellers, and uh, they built their, the, 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 their airplane, the, the Wright Flyer, it was called. It was, they, they, they put it together in a, 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 a very ramshackle type building at Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, and the Outer Banks is just a, a, like a, a, a large sand, sand bank. And uh, they put it together there, and uh, in December 1903, they finally made the first flight. The, 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 first, the, the, the first one, the, 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 the first attempt, uh, or, or I think it was Orville that made the first one, he pulled the control column back too quickly, and it dropped, it, uh, the, the airplane dropped to the ground real quickly. It damaged the airplane to some extent, and uh, the, they, they repaired that, and, flew, and it flew, they flew it away. The, there were no, no newspapers at that time available to, to, to record oh, the yes. event. But uh, some local people... Uh, a group of local people standing uh, alongside. They watched. They were watching it, and one man was heard to say, uh, what, uh, it, "It it flew. Uh, uh, damn it! If it if it, if it ain't flew." So yeah, they they and uh, it was they, they were quite successful. They went from there to. To uh, to France with their their airplane and they did a lot of work with the French pioneers and uh, that that was all before World, before World War One and then moved things everything moved very rapidly as soon as the war started in World War One. Well, let's With talk about right. that. Yes, because you talk about uh, World War One, then you talk about all of the advances between the world wars and obviously the role of uh, of aviation in the wars. Talk about, this goes from Kitty Hawk and their, the experimentation and the problems they were having to actually being a vital part of, of the First World War. Talk about that. Aviation really grew up quickly, didn't it? It was quite remarkable. Yes. Uh, quite a few people, but when both sides of the Atlantic got uh, got the idea of building airplanes, uh, Curtis and uh, De Havilland, uh, Morris Farman, Blario, all those people were, were, were rapidly going ahead building airplanes. At that time, they they, they rapidly got onto the idea of building a, a fuselage made out of uh, spruce. Uh, woodwork wrapped with with, uh, with canvas, and uh, in a matter, within a matter of two or three years, in, 19, in fact, in 19, 1914, Sir Geoffrey de Havilland, he was the he had a, a, a fighter airplane, it was the first airplane in the Royal Air Force, or the Royal it was called the Royal Flying Corps at that time. And uh, so he started with, with, with that airplane. It looked like it was a, 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 an open cockpit, the first pe- people sitting, sitting out front. Oh, yes. But that, that's how, the, that's how they, they started the, in, the, in World War I. And then pe- people, people like Anthony Fokker came along with his, his Fokker triplane, which he sold to the, to the German Air Force. And uh, de Havilland and, and A.V. Rowe, 
turned out uh, fighters and bombers real quickly within two or three years. By the end of the war, they had uh, big bombers like the Vickers Vimy bomber, who was a twin engine bomber, uh, and lots and lots of these Fokker airplanes flying around. It's tremendous progress made. New document. Yeah, finish that thought because it's so impressive what uh, the the ingenuity that went, the creativity, the 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 technical knowledge that went in. Talk about that. You you were saying it led up to I think World War Two then. Oh yes, then uh, rapidly, uh, immediately, immediately after World War One, the uh, they crossed the Atlantic. The, the Curtis NC four flying boats of the uh, U.S. Navy were the first ones to cross the Atlantic, followed by two intrepid pioneers, Alcock and Brown, flying this, this Vickers Vimy bomber. They also crossed the Atlantic. That was in 1918 and 1919, that period. Uh, see, after that, shortly short, short afterwards, we got people like Charles Lindbergh came along, and uh, uh, Emilia Earhart, um, uh, Wiley, Wiley Post, all those people came along, all within uh, around the 1930 period, well, around and, that time. And you go it's into incredible. detail. Yeah, it really is the people and the engineers behind the scenes that made all of this possible. The book we're talking about is written by Norman Curry. If you're Googling, that's C-U-R-R-E-Y. The book is Airplane Stories and Histories. You'll find the book at all the usual places, published by Bookside Press, their website, booksidepress.com. Go to our website. You'll link on directly to Norman's Amazon page and be able to uh, to order that book there as well. You touch on something, and you go back and you read this, and you, you, you realize what the times were, 1917, 1918, what was it like in those early days, do you think, when they when they decided to cross the Atlantic? I mean, there's virtually you either make it or you don't make it. What was what was that like those those early days when they were crossing the, the Atlantic for the first time? Well, they had the, the US Navy they couldn't fly across the Atlantic in one in non non stop. Yes. So they flew from from Newfoundland to the Azores and across to Lisbon and Lisbon to Plymouth. And uh, even then, only one of the th- th- three airplanes that started, only one of them succeeded in making it all the way. The other the other two the other two had to abandon the airplanes uh, uh, usually in the Azores. Um. They had, the, the airplane themselves were flying in very bad weather. The, with one man sitting in a in a thing like a garbage can, sitting at the front of the airplane, <laughs> waving his hands around to guide the pilot as to whether to, to, to how 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 to go up or down or, or tilt a little bit to the left or the right or whatever. And uh, they they eventually made it uh, all the way across. Alcock and Brown, they flew non-stop from, from uh, Newfoundland to Ireland. And when they landed in Ireland, they, they saw a field that, go, that looked like a good, a good field to land on. They didn't realize it was just a, a bog, a, a swamp. Oh, so they, yes. they landed, <laughs> they landed <laughs> in this swamp and the airplane made it tilted over on his nose. Uh, but the other, nevertheless, they made it all right. They, uh, it's quite a wonderful achievement. It certainly uh, is, and you do such a wonderful job of bringing all of this out, airplane stories and histories, meticulously researched, anecdote-driven, uh, some of modern aviation's most pivotal moments come alive in, in Norman's book, Airplane Stories and Histories, once again, and all this information, of course, on our website. Time is going by so quickly. I want to jump into commercial aviation. You were a, a very important part of that in the early days of commercial aviation. What was that like when the decision was made, okay, now we're going to put people on these airplanes, ultimately leading to the 747? Yes, I I remember as a boy going to Croydon Airport, which was the the airfield for London, and seeing these 
Raj, I'm going to uh, Handley Page biplanes with, I don't, I don't know how many seats there were, there about ten, 10 people on board, that's about all. They could carry, and they were, as I remember, they, they were like wicker chairs anchored to the floor. And uh, that, was, that was the first flight were from London to Paris. That was way back in, oh, let's see, but in, in the early 1930s was when I saw them. And uh, then later on, but very quickly thereafter, we got uh, the, 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 the first Boeing uh, transport arrived on the scene. And uh, the, the first jet airplane, the first jet air, airliner was the de Havilland Comet which unfortunately uh, had, had ran into to, to, uh, structural problems. The, 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 it was, it was called, technically it was called fati metal fatigue. Oh, yes. Which was, was a science that people didn't know very much about back in those days. They found out very quickly after, after the comet started blowing up. The two comets disintegrated over the Mediterranean and uh, that gave Boeing the opportunity to take the lead, and th that's when the Boeing 707 came uh, came, came into being, and uh, that started n regular non-stop flights across the Atlantic. Just um, amazing stories in Norman's book. We have a couple of minutes left in the program. Norman Curry, that's C-U-R-R-E-Y. The book is Airplane Stories and Histories. I mentioned the 747. I'm you know, Talk about that when, when you were aware of the development, when you see the aircraft and all of the people on the airplane. Could you have dreamed when you started this career back in, in, in the early 1940s that you would see a plane right. like the 747? <laughs> No, we, we we had no idea that we would ever be carrying people that number of people on, on an airplane back then. The uh, and the the, the 747 itself had an interesting story. The, the Air Force, the, the U.S. Air Force, issued uh, a, a, a started a competition for a transport for a, a cargo transport. Um, the the two finalists in that competition were Lockheed and Boeing. Now, Lockheed won the competition. That became the Lockheed C-5, the world's largest transport, the cargo transport. Boeing, the loser, put the, sh the drawings up on the shelf, and very shortly thereafter, the president of Pan American Airways, one trippy, came along and said he w wanted a, a large airplane, and, and he, he t t told Boeing what he was looking for. Boeing said, well, we have one airplane we, we can trans we can change into a, a passenger transport very easily. It's the Boeing 747. One trip, he looked at it and said, that's just exactly what I need. <laughs> so they, 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 they turned out this uh, this airplane, which... Uh, which turned out to be the, the, the Boeing 747 with tw 12 passengers seating 12 across and they the, the still kept the upper level uh, that they had as a passenger transport and that, that turned out to be a very, very successful project. The, the 747 la lasted for years and years. It, it only went out of production just just a few months ago. Yeah, it's amazing the longevity of that. It's it's the the early days, the history of aviation, the people, the the, the airplanes, the development, the progression, all outlined uh, in the book "Airplane Stories and uh, and Histories" by Norman Curry, our our guest on the program. I got a, a minute or so here left. I want to talk about. I mentioned in the beginning the possibility of electric powered aircraft. Where do you see the future of aviation? What are you excited? about? about seeing? I expect that uh, electric powered airplanes will become a, a reality within the next year or two. Um, they, d due to the, the weight of batteries and the co cost and so on, it's going to be restricted to sm this smaller aircraft. 
I don't I don't foresee any large aircraft using electric power. Uh, instead, they will use uh, hydrogen uh, powered uh, engines. Uh, we, they they also will be coming along probably with, within the next ten years. You'll see hydrogen powered. Uh, airliners for the larger ones. And it's all yeah. possible because of the work you and so many others did in the uh, the early stages. It is a, a fascinating read going behind the stories, the histories of, uh, of all the different aircraft and aviation in general and all of the changes that uh, that Norman has talked about in the program and so much more in the book. The pictures there, uh, enough technical information, you have an understanding of what's happening, uh, great anecdotes, great information. Norman, it's been a pleasure having you on the program. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, what a remarkable career that you've had. It has to be fun to, to look back and to think where, uh, where aviation was or wasn't when you started the career and where it is today because of the foundation you were part of. Thank you for joining us on the program. Thank you very much. Uh, pleasure. I enjoyed it. And it was a pleasure having you with us on the program. Norman Curry, that's C-U-R-R-E-Y. The book is Airplane Stories and Histories. You'll find it at uh, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, usual places, published by BooksidePress.com. And, of course, all of this information on our website, ThisWeekInAmerica.us. And we're back on today's program right after we pause for these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, ThisWeekInAmerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bechet, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.